Welcome to the Autosportradio.com 2020 show. We are still at the Grand King Race Shops. Uh, They're kind enough, Bill and Stephanie Throckmorton are allowing us in here. And as you can see behind me, one of the vehicles they have for sale is the number six uh, Olsenite Eagle driven by Bobby Unser. It is for sale. There's other cars in here for sale. If you're looking to get into vintage racing, you don't have a car. If you have one, you can have it restored here and you get the engine rebuilt right here at the Grand King Race Shops. Give them a call if you're looking for a car or you have something you need work done, call them, number 317-820-3595. Today's show is presented by the Honda and Honda HPD, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the NTT IndyCar Series, SVRA and McGilvery's, and VP Insurance. Should you have the delight of wanting to get a, a, some dental work, work done, I highly recommend, because we go there, the Indy Dental Group, Indy 500 veteran Dr. Jack Miller and his wife, Dr. Liz Lewis, have a phenomenal practice, one of the highest rated ones in the state. Give them a call, make an appointment, number 317-846-6125. And we do have a new computer guy, it's an A-plus affordable computer doctor. And he's a doctor because, like in the old days, he makes house calls. His name is Steve Freeze. Give him a call. Tell him what your problem is, and he'll tell you what he can do. The number is 317-328-0766. And if you're interested in taking a ride and see why the guys and gals love driving Indy cars, take a ride in the two-seater. You can go to IndyRacingExperience.com and uh, uh, find a date that works for you and when they're running. And uh, in the promo box, put DK1 and you get a 50% discount. Or you can call Shonda at their office. The number is 317-243-7171. Again, ask for Shonda. Is it time for insurance for your home, your car, commercial property? Do what I've done and a lot of people have done. Call Mike Pardee at VP Insurance. He's located at 5004 West 16th Street in Speedway. And you'll find, as I did just recently, I got a, a house insurance lowered premium, better coverage. Mike can help you. Give him a call. 317-248-0070. And if you are a vintage fan of any sort, it doesn't matter what the car is. If you're a vintage fan, you need to go to svra.com and subscribe to Speed Tour Magazine. It's a first class publication. Got great stories, great pictures, great cars. And a lot of the cars you saw as a kid, they're running again. And some of the drivers you saw as a kid, they're driving them. So take it, take, take my word. It's a great magazine, svra.com, and subscribe to Speed Tour Magazine. My guest today is a gentleman who is the owner and CEO of SVRA, Sports Car Vintage Racing Association. He's also the majority owner of the Trans Am Series, which is coming back to life again. Talking to us all the way from New York, and you can see his library. He's a well-read young man. Please welcome Mr. Tony Perella. How are you doing, Hi. Tony? I'm doing good, John. Thanks for having me. On. Um, uh, I'd no. rather be at McAlvery's with you, but we'll uh, we'll make <laughs> this work as best as possible. I got news for you. About two and a half, three, four weeks ago, I didn't know there was such a thing as doing this. And when they said, you want to do Zoom, I said, what in the world's that? Going fast <laughs> on the street? No. So we're doing it. And I see you have a series now. Uh, talk to Tony. Yes. we. Uh, I, I got to confess, I didn't know Zoom either. <laughs> uh but my team brought me to the, the modern day era in uh, to fill in some of the gaps to uh, keep just people up to date what's going on. We use it for meetings and we've been doing uh, talks with Tony series. I've had Willie, Little Al, uh, Dorsey Schrader. Uh, this week you'll see me do uh, Mike Skinner. And next week I think we're doing Wally Dahlenbach. So every week we do uh, one legend driver to have some fun. Well, we, we're doing two and three legend people at, uh, here just to keep the word out that we're still alive and well. Yes. How, how are things going with SVRA and Trans Am? I know you're shut down, but knowing you as I do, you are keeping everybody up to date and keeping them on the payroll and going on. Yeah, I mean, we've, um, like every business in America, we're adjusting to what I call the new normal. We've, um, we're actually doing, we're actually doing very well. If you, if you step back from it, this is an opportunity 
to refine a lot of things that we just flat didn't have time to do because we are at such explosive growth over the last seven years. So I have assigned several initiatives to my team ranging from uh, on-track medical procedures, documentation, to modern day issues like uh, what should we change for registration in the new COVID era? Uh, how do we change Victory Circle? How do we change tech? Just to have social distancing at an event when we never even frankly thought of social distancing. Uh, you know, everything from digital programs to uh, uh, instead of print programs, every process we do, we're reevaluating. The good news is, as a business our size, normally you're dealing with three issues. If you don't have revenue coming in, you still have money going out. And a company our size normally has real estate to manage, which costs money, has debt to manage, which is, it is what it is. And of course, your payroll and healthcare. In our situation, we don't have debt and we don't have real estate to manage because we all work from our homes or we're gypsies. We're never in one place long <laughs> enough to need an office. So uh, we're fortunate in that respect. We just need to focus on covering our uh, employees. And because we're not drowning in debt, we have the flexibility that we can do that. So, you know, my mantra for years in any business is if you take care of the company, the company will take care of you. That's paramount. But my team is, um, you know, they're a resilient bunch. They've really rallied around getting our processes refined. And, uh, you know, where it, there's, it, I'm probably working harder today than ever on calls, communicating with the Speedway, redoing the schedules, uh, communicating with our sponsors is a key deal because, you know, they had an expectation of big crowds going to races and suddenly we're all shut down. You know, most of my sponsors, I said, don't pay me till we go back to racing because it's not fair to you. And so we're, we're adjusting to one expectation of revenue to this shutdown, but we're, I think we're handling it as well as you can. Well, one thing that's always impressed me when I first uh, met you and looked into you, that one of the things that you accomplished in the numerous businesses that you bought and turned around and so forth, you were voted on a number of occasions one of the top 50 companies to work for in America. That says one heck of a lot about you and how you operate, in my opinion. Well, I think, I, you know, thank you for that. But I, th I think it's about creating a culture of balance where the employees are empowered and feel valued in good times and bad. It's real easy to take care of your employees when a business is doing well. <laughs> it's a different exercise when your your business is struggling, as, as a lot of companies are finding out right now. And, um, Having that balance of community, I, I will tell you, one of the steps we took with our team, I said, look, um, my job is to preserve the enterprise, but my job is to take care of you. So here's, here's an initiative to give you a sense of our culture. Told the entire team, everybody across the board is going to take a 20% cut in pay for five months, period. No questions asked, don't care who you are, 20% cut in pay, owner, no paycheck. However, when we get back to normal, if we get back to normal by year end, I'm going to write you all a one month's pay bonus in addition to your normal comp. So you won't actually have taken a hardship. If we don't get back to normal, you all kept your jobs through that whole time. At least it helps me preserve cash till we get back to some semblance of normal. And, you know, to a person, nobody pushed back. In fact, I got notes saying thanks. It, it, you know, we appreciate the way you do this. So, uh, you know, they're working harder than they've ever worked. I, I, I think we will be by year end, um, not in this lockdown mode, we'll be back to what I'm calling the new normal. And the new normal will look different than the old normal, but we'll be, we'll be in business. We'll be here. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Uh, you've, you've taken companies that shouldn't have been there and turned them around and made them a, a juicy a morsels for somebody to buy. Um, how is the Trans Am doing? I mean, Trans Am was uh, off of no, it was in nobody's mind a couple of years ago. And all of a sudden now it's, there's a resurgence. Uh, are the fans um, coming out as they used to? You know, it's amazing. I, I, I think one of the 
disappointing things for me uh, through all of this process is we had an unbelievable Sebring race in the last couple of days of February, first couple of days of March. And we had our first live streaming. We had over 535,000 people. That number blows my mind in 41 countries in one day, just on our Facebook between Trans Am and SVRA, watch our streaming, 535,000. Um, that's not counting our app. That's not counting Spotify or whatever they call it, all these other <laughs> mediums. I don't even know what they call it. But we had, you know, the crowds were huge. We had fan walk. Everything was perfect. And, um, you know, the world changed. So we've since launched uh, an e-racing series uh, that this week will be at Road Atlanta, Michelin Road Atlanta in uh the what makes our platform unique is the drivers this week will have to be able to upload their own library so they can promote their own sponsors uh, instead of being locked into one library. And um, it's a way to keep them excited. We got, we'll have close to 40 drivers racing this weekend. And so I'm excited about that. And the numbers are still compelling of people watching e-racing, which I, honestly, I would have never thought possible. It's not a replacement for the real thing in my mind, but it's a way to keep from going crazy when you're in, you know, this lockdown. But the series itself, oh my God, we were, we had so much momentum and I think we'll be back. I, I um, we plan on uh, our first weekend back is at IMS uh, on Father's Day weekend. And I, at that race, we'll have SVRA and we'll have, uh, Trans Am, and I and I, you know, we're going to live stream it. So uh, I'm I'm not I'm thinking right now it's probably more likely not to have fans than have fans this year because of it's right on the edge of of everybody coming out. And I I'm going to err. It you know it's not just my decision. It's also the Speedway's decision, obviously. But I think I want to err on the side of being extra precautious to not put people at undue risk. So the way we do that is maybe we hold the race, but I like give all the fans anywhere in the world free access to the streaming, free access to our digital program, and take that step first before we go back to full-blown racing with our fans and everything. So that means we won't have the V-Rock at Indy this year, which is such a key piece, but I can't ask you know, Wally Dahlenbeck Sr. is going to be our grand marshal. I, I'm no more going to put him at risk to come to a racetrack right now with all the unknown. So I got to, I just got to be smart. We're going to, we want to be, we don't want to be alarmist, but we want to be prudent and safe. And uh, my mantra for my team, it's kind of funny. Our goal is to make racing with SVR and Trans Am safer than going to the grocery store. That's my, I keep harping on that and and i think we can accomplish that and yeah it's a play on words that you think about racing is probably one of the more dangerous sports but that's not what we're talking about we're talking about getting through registration and checking in and, and going through tech make that safer than going to your local grocery store that's what that's our job right now um you just announced a new member of your board of directors uh what did you see that you needed another member and and so forth. Uh, well, Nick Craw is a, is a very, very unique uh, gentleman. 17 years as the president of the SCCA, president of the ACUS board, direct connection to the FIA, huge international experience, big time racer in his own right. Um, you just can't find that level of expertise. There are areas uh, of the industry that I want to grow. Uh, and I want to invest in, you know, right now we have the Trans Am Race Series and we have SVRA, we have IGT, we have VROC, but I, I think in this environment creates more opportunity and having someone like Nick on our staff or team as a board member, I can't buy that level of, of experience he's been just a godsend to me and i think collectively we'll go we'll be able to secure some other opportunities and bring them in house as part of crawl motorsports holding and nick will be a key piece of that uh, you have a president who happens to 
reside in Indianapolis. I haven't chased after him yet, but uh, I will. Matt, how's Matt doing? He's actually no longer with us. Oh, really? I didn't see anything. Yeah, he, um, he left back in January for some personal reasons. And um, so yeah. I've kind of been shouldering this with the team uh, for the short haul. It just it was one of those situations where he had to take care of some personal stuff that just didn't allow him to take the demands of this and, and handle what he had to deal with. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I... I never saw anything about that. If it, it was if it was uh, released, I I must have missed it. Yeah, no, we didn't we didn't put anything out. We just we just went about our business. He he needed to take care of some personal things. Okay, well then I I don't feel bad. I didn't miss something. No, I tried no, to keep up. No, no um, it seems to me, and I've heard a number of people and read a number of people commenting. You're 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 kind of steering away from open wheel IndyCar and so forth. Why? Um, I, it's actually not true. If you look at the schedule for, um, uh, IMS this year, we actually have, um, a open dedicated open wheel group. We have three of them, a pre-war, a roadster and a pre, uh, a wings and slicks for like pre ground effects series or group. <laughs> They're going to get, uh, five sessions on the oval. And um, it's a pretty big deal. We give them a, a garage. The only thing that I promised them that I'm not going to deliver on is Wally Dahlenbeck. That we're going to have a special breakfast with Wally Dahlenbeck Sr. with the Oval Only guys on, on Saturday. We were having a judge car show, which we'll still have. Um, but in, in this environment, obviously, as I said, I don't want to put Wally Sr. at risk. But um, no, I think, in fact, Honestly, just the opposite. I'm looking at uh, one of the things I'm looking into, which I can't really disclose specific details. I think you'll see us being more involved with open wheel racing than ever in our history. I'll put it that way. So well, there's more to come on that. Well, good. Because as I'm sure you've seen, if I've seen it, I know you've seen comments yeah. about not yeah. being present as much. And that you're saying that if that's not true, it's going to change and get bigger. Good. No, I mean, last year at the IMS, what, what people, you know, everybody's got an opinion, but sometimes they don't have all the information. Last year, we had 97 Formula Fords race at IMS, okay? And to do that larger group safely, I had to make two groups for just the Formula Fords. And then we had Formula Juniors. We had uh, our group nine, which is, is more of an Indy car type car so we had four dedicated race groups to open wheel well that's the good news the bad news is something had to give with all the other things that we do so the turnout for the oval only group the last year before that on 18 was honestly not very good so i said to hell with it we'll cut that out of the thing now this year i sent out invitations for the oval only group oh my god I think we did that in January it was the first wave. And uh, if fans go on the thing, if they go on our website and look at the schedule, they'll see there's a whole dedicated, it's a five day opportunity for them to go mess around on the oval and the road course. So it's pretty cool for the, it's for the older vintage guys that want to lay out, you know, go out with their open wheel, hopefully with IndyCar history and exercise on the track and, and be a part of the great opportunity to, to be at Indy in a race car that once raced there as a, as in its time. Well, that's good. And of course, SVRA sports car vintage. So you're bringing back vintage cars, which is what your basic aim is anyway, is vintage racing. And it seems to me that uh, since you started this, uh, you're getting people's attention. You've wanted this to become a major motorsports event, and I think you're you're approaching that rather rapidly. I think you know what, Don. I think we're a work in progress. When when the, the mantra that I laid out in '12 was someday I want to be part of mainstream motorsports in this country, and the process is we're on that we're on that trajectory. You know that when I bought. SVR in 2012, we ran at three venues, uh, Sebring, Mid-Ohio, and Watkins. You know, today on the schedule, 14 events, 14 different venues. Um, 
today a national magazine, today a national footprint, today live streaming with our own dedicated app, uh, today with the Trans Am side, uh, an E-Race series, soon to have an SVRA E-Race series. Um, we're not there, but we're, we're a lot closer. If you look at the sponsorship, uh, when you, you know, when you start naming Jaguar, Net Jets, Land Rover, Bell Helmets, and Oakle Fuel, Pirelli Tire, Hoosier Tire, um, Haycock Insurance, Haggerty Insurance, and so on and so on and so on. Um, it really becomes clear that we're approaching it. We're a lot farther along towards becoming part of Main Street. What's interesting in July, our newest, one of our newest sponsors, Lucas Oil, also owns Mav TV, as I'm sure you know. Uh, we have our own TV series coming out, a six episode series uh, about the behind the scenes and what goes on in an SVRA race. And it takes a deep dive into some of the competitors who race with us. And this will be another step towards raising the awareness of vintage racing but also raising the awareness of Trans Am as well. I mean, it's all under the Speed Tour banner. Uh, Adam Andretti, we just did a feature on him at Sebring, and uh, they did a tribute card to his brother John, so that's a Trans Am story. We did a story of uh, Edward Chedavian and Willie T racing in the V-Rock race. We did a story of um, Dr. Claire, who's a neonatal surgeon saving babies in Dallas, racing with Johnny Rutherford in the V-Rock. So it goes, it's not just racing footage. It goes behind the scenes and shows what these people are about. So we're, we're really excited about the, what that's going to bring to us. You know, I, I, I hate to say this, but I, I'm much older than you are. But I would never, ever have thought never would cross my mind all the things you can do with the advent of the internet, e-racing, doing what we're doing on Zoom, which three weeks ago I never heard of. <laughs> um, you know, the things that the electronic world has available that although you can't be at an event and it's an imitation event, my, my thought is, and in, in having watched these guys on these machines, it's the same, almost the same thing as being in the car. The difference is instead of looking out and seeing something, you're looking at a screen, seeing what you're doing, who's ahead of you. So I think, you know, it, it's as close to a, ra a real race as you're going to get until you sit in the car. But some of these guys, when they've gotten done with the race, when they've talked to him afterward, he said, I'm tired. This isn't easy. Oh, my God. The, the, what's funny is the effort that these guys, you know, we're taking some old school guys I mean, Boris said uh, is racing in our e-racing deal with Trans Am. And he's won, I don't know how many races in Trans Am and NASCAR everywhere else. And he's, he is, he's come from nowhere and he's, he was never on a simulator. He was he's not a sim guy. Um, but, you know, they're paying their dues. They're getting faster. They're enjoying it. And, you know, we have a race control. There's a, it's like marshalling a regular race. Oh, yeah. Except these guys are on that screen. But to that point about technology to show how far it's come, we launched our app and live streaming at Sebring, as I said. And one of the things you could do is you could pick one of seven cameras on our first iteration of this of viewing the track. So if you're a fan on the side of a you know, side front straightaway and you want to see – turn eight or turn nine or whatever turn on the other end, you can change cameras and watch your guy around the lap. Second thing you could do, our next iteration, you can pick the driver you want to ride with. So if, you, you know, if you're in the V-Rock race and you want to ride with Bobby Labonte or you want to ride with Al Unser Jr. or Willie T or whoever, you literally could put their name in or their car and you'll be able to ride with them and look at it through the windshield like they are. And to me as a fan, what a cool technology. And if somebody would have told me we could make that work seven years ago. So the, where I see is I have an advantage that, you know, when the guys were laying the foundation for the sport and had to do typical TV advertising and in, had to be on a major network to get awareness. You no longer have to do that. You can, it's great when you have it, 
but there's, you know, this beautiful thing called the internet and social media and smart marketing. You can achieve huge numbers and huge awareness without, without spending yourself into oblivion. And that's what we're trying to learn that science of how do we market on behalf of our sponsors, but raise the awareness to our fans because I think we're the best kept secret in America still is people don't know about vintage racing unless you, they know somebody who does. It's not like it's on primetime TV. So we're, we're really pushing hard to change that. One thing that's also has impressed me is you're a salesman. Uh, you uh, sold your employees. If you help me, I'll help you. And it's always paid off for you. You have an, uh, and your intention of, stepping back from presidency was to allow you to sell and bring in sponsors. And boy, have you done that? What is your, what have you got that people want to join you? What is, what is your sales mantra that says, come with us. Here's what we have and here's what we can do for you. And here's how you can network. Um, it's, it's really fundamentally very simple. The first step is sitting with a prospective sponsor and understanding what are they what is what are they trying to accomplish when they go to market understanding how they sell why they sell what products are their best margin then writing a plan using our platform with our 16,000 people in our database or 4500 entries in a in a typical season um, our social media our platform our speed tour magazine that you referenced earlier putting all of those things together to go to work on behalf of the sponsor where we can show them you invest here, you'll get this return on investment and then delivering it. Um, more often than not, I see people do a sponsorship deal. And as soon as they get the check, they think, the, <laughs> they think the work stops. That's yeah. when it starts. That's right. And, and um, you know, even in this environment, uh, I think this will be, you know, I told my team, I think this will be our finest hour on behalf of our sponsors because every company in America, when they come or the world for that matter, when we come out of this COVID-19, it's, it's going to come in steps. It's not going to be a flash cut where everything's better. Number two, companies are going to be licking their wounds, recovering financially from no income coming in we cannot expect them to write big sponsorship checks this year. So we need to go to our sponsors and say, look, um, we understand the pain you're feeling. We're going to, for existing sponsors, we're going to push out payments till we get back to normal to lessen that load off of you. For new sponsors, I'm going to give them this year as a proof of concept. we we'll still bring a lot of value. Let's sign a two or three year deal. But this year, you don't pay me a dime, we get this much sales, then you start paying me. So we earn the respect, we earn the right, we earn it, we document a return on investment. This takes focus and it takes documentation and it takes belief and, and execution. And we really, I think we probably do that better than most. And that's been, honestly, since day one, that's been the foundation of our success with sponsors. It's not about, we'll put your logo up. That's, that's not what we do. We do that, but it's not about just counting impressions. It's not about uh, digital awareness. It's about everything that we can tie back to a return on investment. That's the secret. Uh, your cars, like IndyCar, the sponsor, I mean, they look just exactly like the car will look. Uh, your cars are the same. Your, your sponsors are on vehicles, and it's very plain to see. So yeah. the sponsors happy with what you're doing. They're getting exposure currently. I, I think our, you know, I I think our sponsors are shocked by how hard we're working in this environment. Um, you know, one of my biggest sponsors is Jaguar Land Rover, and you know, any auto manufacturer right now, worldwide, is most likely shut down. Their factories are closed. Um, you know, Jaguar is such a huge component of our years where Davey Jones, Roberto Guerrero come to an event, you drive with them in a Jaguar or Land Rover, an autocross or off-road. 
And, uh, and it's clear we're not going to be able to do that in social distance. It's <laughs> pretty, pretty hard to do that, do hot lap social distance. And so, um, you know, we're working on videos for them. We've done direct connects to our drivers. We've done a, a special code that SVRA members can get a discount off a new Land Rover or um, uh, Jaguar. For NetJets, we've done uh, a direct connect. We're about to, you know, fly private in this environment. For We have some very wealthy people that can afford that. I'm connecting them through with a special discount program for SVRA members, taking advantage of the 7% reduction in tax for airlines. So they can fly in private actually makes a little bit more sense financially than it usually does. And um, we're just doing anything we can to help our sponsors and connect our drivers and fans to those sponsors and get them a benefit as we do it. And um, I think we got a very strong, very compelling platform to build on to do that. And that's what's keeping my sponsors alive. You know, there's some companies in this environment doing very well. Remington was one of our newest sponsors that we added. They're doing great in this environment. Um, NetJets is doing great in this environment. Other companies are suffering. Race-related companies are, are struggling right now because nobody's racing. So, you know, we have to, we're adapting and being as good a partner as we can be and looking at the business side of this through their lens, not just ours. And I think, you know, any contract I got, you can throw it away. If the wrong thing to do is to take their money that they're not getting value, I'm not going to hold somebody's feet to the fire until we can provide value. That's just the way we roll. You know, something that has impressed me since watching IndyCar and I started now watching when I found out you guys are running is how realistic it looks in an IndyCar, which has had an open top. Yeah. I didn't realize until the second race, as they're going around the corner, you see the shadow in the when the in car camera, you see the shadow of the sun with the halo around it. It's a good grief, it looks as real as you can get. And to me, uh, as with your events, if you're not, you know, a diehard, but you say, well, what, let's watch this, looks interesting. You look at it, you swear it's a race. Yeah. The only thing that gave it away to me for the IndyCar race that I noticed when they pulled in the pit area, if the guy in front of the, two cars come in, the guy in front is a little slower. They don't collide. They just go right through it. You see, I just pass through. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't work that way in real life. <laughs> no, <laughs> not even close. Although we've had some drivers try to do that. but yeah. uh, <laughs> um, Have you invited a driver and said, no, I don't want to get into this. I don't want to do this. Either the I you know the e racing or invited to drive in your live events. If you have uh, nah, I got to cut the grass. I'm busy. No, uh, you know it's crazy. The the first the V Rock side. I'm I'm still in awe of how many big names. I mean, big big names have raced in that for charity. And you know I don't pay them. I pay their travel, but I don't, they don't get a check when they, <laughs> it's, they're donating their weekend. But we, you know, we've raised over a million dollars for various charities since we started the program. So I'm excited about that. Um, you know, on the VROC side, they love it. And, you know, they all understand right now it's a little bit different world. So we're going to have to put the brakes on until we can get back to large crowds. But the, uh, the e-racing side, if they got access to a simulator, they want to do it. And, you know, some of them are horrible. We, <laughs> we, had, a, <laughs> we had to put a qualifier in for the Trans Am one because some guys were such great racers on the racetrack, but in the simulator, they're pathetic. And they're wrecking the race. They're crashing, right? And, you know, they just step on the gas and think they can do this. And you, you got you to gotta finesse it. And... Uh, so we have a qualifying if the, we take the top 20. So the features are real raises in that crash fest, but <laughs> we're, um, guys are, you know, I, I think the whole community, you know, when I started this talks with Tony, something as simple as that, I pick up the phone and, you know, this morning I was talking to Wally Dallenbeck Jr. Say, hey, I'd love to have you on our, our weekly show. Man, call me in. What time you want me there? And it's like two seconds, Willie, little Al, how can I help? They are so invested in SVRA and Trans Am and VROC. 
I'm, uh, sometimes I'm a little bit in awe of that because they were on the biggest stage and we're not that. And but yet they they can't do enough for us to help us. So it's I, I feel blessed to be part of this with with so many great people. You know, speaking of Willie, and and everybody does one time or another, including his wife telling him to sit down and be quiet, perhaps. <laughs> um, that movie that he did was the you know, Uppity was really quite a good movie, I thought. And I, I uh, sent him a message and said, you know, if you can get a, a good spot in a, a part in a, pl a movie where you can sit and talk, you'll be a, you'll be an Oscar winner. But, he, you know, I thought it showed well what he went through, uh, you know, how he accomplished what he did, the, the attention that he got as a result of it and the, and the sponsorship with Bill Cosby helping him and so forth. It, it was a good film and, and really, I thought, told pretty much the story of what Willie went through to get to where he is today. And he's probably more popular now than he was. I, I actually think it's true. I think, I think the film gave fans and non-fans, non-motorsports fans, a real glimpse. Uh, I thought Adam Carolla did an incredible yeah. job of getting Willie to open up. Willie's, you know, I've become pretty good buds with Willie over the years. We, we, you know, I could honestly say he's one of my best friends. And, but Willie has a wall. You know, you, you only get so close and then he's, he's going to push you back. I thought that Adam somehow figured a way to penetrate that wall and let you felt his hurt. I mean, it's in there. And I'm just so happy for him because he, he didn't have an easy road. That was obvious. And, you know, I think he was misunderstood uh, with that defense, that tough, no nonsense exterior that he has. But yet there's a, big baby in the middle of all that and he's just um he's a good guy and i'm just thrilled for him you know i uh if you look at uh i guess what speaks to willie right now he's like the, he's become the elder statesman for change and you know this kyle larson thing was unfortunate and and willie took the initiative called kyle spoke to his family talked to Kyle counseled him, coached him, made him understand, but didn't handle it perfectly. He he was a change agent that there's, there's no place in the world for this stuff anymore. It should have never been there in the first place. But instead of him piling on, he made this kid understood the environment, understood the pieces that you need to know this. And the numbers that I saw on Willie's story on Racer were over 80,000 shares where he, somebody took that story and sent it to somebody else to read. 80,000. And the typical story on Racer, even with our good friend Robin Miller, probably three, 4,000 shares to five, six, 80 plus thousand shares. And that, I was just, you know, I called them and said, it's pretty cool the way you handle this. You taught the kid, and that's that's what it's about. It's just it, I'm just proud of him. I'm thankful that he's in my life. We just have some. <laughs> he's always sending me something that he shouldn't be sending me, and um, he's just a hoot. He's he's just fun. You know, if if you don't know Willie, but you've heard of, or ever get a chance to meet his son, you'll realize Willie is not the guy you might think or perceive because his Theo is a super nice young man, yeah. a world champion shooter of all things. Um, in fact, I just uh, got something from him last night about, he sent me this stand. I said, what in the world is that? He didn't send it to me, but he put it out. And I said, what is that? He said, that's how we practice. And he showed me a picture of how they use it and they use them in competition. I said, well, do you have to drag this with you? He said, no, they got them, but I have mine so I can practice. So when I get there, I'm not going, oh, what's this? Good kid, super nice kid. And I think, you know, you have to look to Willie and say, obviously he wasn't a bad influence because this kid has turned out really, really well. No, he did such a good job with Theo. Um, very respectful, well-spoken, smart kid. And he's, like, to your point, one of the best in the world now. And it's just neat. I've, I've watched that unfold 
as my life with Willie has. And um, just a good kid, yeah. really good kid. Uh, one, one last question for you. You have made a comment about this for your businesses in which you said, you know, you, you were in the communication business. People use your equipment to communicate. But nobody ever stopped you in the street or called you up and said, thank you. Has anybody said since you got into SVRA and have expanded, has anybody come up to you and said, Tony, thank you. This is great. Oh, my God. It's amazing how many times. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's funny you say that. Uh, when I least expect it and I get one of those, it kind of keeps me going a little bit. Uh, I'll give you something, a simple example of an example of that. I, we were struggling finding masks for my events. I wanted to buy 2,000 masks, and I don't want to. I don't want to take away from healthcare people or frontline people, but I want to. I want to do every step I can to make our race safe for Indy. Right, that's our first focus. In one of my racers heard through one of my staff that I was trying to find it, and he manufactures them. Oh. And calls me up out of the blue and says, hey, uh, I hear you're looking for some protection uh, of mask, gloves. He goes, my company makes them. How many do you want? He goes, I can't tell you what SVRA means to me and my dad. We race together, which is this has become our biggest thing of the year to go to your events. And we want to give you something. What can we do to help you? like wow and so sometimes you know when you're when you're the world seems like it's squeezing you and everything's going wrong um it helps when you hear a voice like that and in the phone business i have to say <laughs> we could be perfect and i only heard from the one guy we weren't perfect from in this i i constantly get an email or a voicemail or something like what i just described it's, it's humbling. And, and then to, you know, as I said, the V-Rock racers and they have a relationship with them and they're grateful to, uh, to be part of this and, and extend their career, or extend their, you know, their opportunity to race and have fun without the pressure, you know, where, you know, when you're, you, they're paying you big ticket to go race and you're also expecting you to deliver the goods and, that pressure can't be fun. That's got to be crushing. We're, we're a little bit different environment. So just feel blessed to be part of it, John. I, I You know, in spite of this current environment, I, I'm having a ball running this thing and being part of racing. It's, it, it's touching a childhood dream for me. I'm not going to race an Indy 500. I don't think Roger's going to let me in. <laughs> but the fact that I can put an event on there and – get around the track if I want in, in um, just to stand on that same podium or what have you, and just go into the pagoda and just be part of the community. I mean, just silly as it sounds, being at McElvery's and doing the show with you and all, all the trimmings that go with being part of motorsports, I won't ever take it for granted. It's just fun. Well, I, I hate to end now, but I think we should because you probably got something else to do. And I'm thinking maybe your executive down in the office, uh, who you were fortunate enough to convince to marry you, Kim, uh, <laughs> please give her my regards. Tell her, sorry she didn't pass by to say hello, but tell her hello. And we look forward to seeing you whenever you get to Indianapolis. Uh, where can fans look up your schedule and see where can you find the information on yeah. SVRA? SVRA.com. It's uh, straightforward. Every event is listed. The schedule is printed out. Um, we're going to be live streaming for no matter what. We're going to live stream the Indy event. So I, I, I don't think we're going to have spectators. It's not 100% sure, but I, I just – Based on what I'm seeing today, it can change, but most likely won't have spectators. But to give something back to the fans, we want to make as much digital access as we can provide for free. So we're going to give them a program and, a, and watch streaming. And I think it'll be a streaming experience they've never seen before. It's really high quality. It's real good. Well, we look forward to it. Thanks for taking the time to be with us. And we look forward to seeing you. Maybe if I we don't have... 
I will see you in about six weeks, I think. And uh, hopefully we'll, uh, I'll give you an elbow shake. There and you I'll, go. <laughs> I'll have a mask on, but we'll, we'll go racing. All right. Thanks. Thanks for having me. This has been Tony Perelli, the owner and CEO of uh, SVRA and a majority owner of Trans Am, talking to us from the beautiful state where it's nice and warm today of New York. Thanks, Tony. Talk Thank to you again. Thank you, sir. Bye -bye. I, want to, I want to make mention, I've forgotten last week to do it, and I had it in front of me, but I fell asleep. I need to thank the Speedway Cable TV, Brian Pearson and, uh, or Brian Pierce and uh, Bill Pease. They uh, made the open and close of the show, and they do the editing when we're done. And I appreciate their time and effort that they put in so we can put this on uh, autosportradio.com and various other places. So thanks to them. Until the next time, Don K. saying to you.